that team actually took a different approach. They said, all right, the facilities folks already have a dashboard that's provided by the company. We want to produce a dashboard that's for the public, and so that provides information in a way that the public uh, you know, can connect with. And so they, they had a lot of great meetings, interdisciplinary meetings between folks from ETSP and the database folks and the interface design folks talking about you know, what that should look like and how you would actually help people to, to come to understand it. And it was very gratifying when they, when they finished doing that the, and the client came in and looked at it. They were already starting, just with a little bit of data that they had, they were already starting to say things like, well, what happened there when you know the production spiked? Because they were um, in many of the dashboards, it was putting production from the the solar panels was on a whole separate dashboard than the than the consumption from the, the building. And just by simply putting those two things together, um, really provide a lot of incentive for them to think about. Well, when we get this energy real energy spike here of usage. You know, is there a way we could shift that to sometime when we're actually producing the energy, you know, offset that cost? Because um, you, get, you get kind of a double bonus when you're producing and using the energy at the same time. Are you using the dashboard here on campus for your classes at all? Uh, Dean was showing it to me a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we have it all over the, the whole campus, the shared campus, and uh, quite a few buildings, but. Uh, So that looks like it would be a great learning tool. It is. Yeah. Do you guys, um, I know you guys cater energy delivery informatic, you know, you know, to the third grader or to the facilities manager, you know, kind of metric phase. Do you guys do anything beyond the dashboard um, related to like text messaging or other? Oh, alarming, you mean? Alarming? Yes, or, we're, we're uh, trying, we're, yeah. we're, we're working on stuff like that. So we're. Um, as I referred to, you know, the utility bills is one thing. Our energy's come and gone. It was six weeks ago. Um, interval meters, however, can tell us what's happening right now in chunks of 15 minutes. So we're setting up systems, um, we call it alarming, so that if if whatever alarms we set tell us, oh, there's a big spike in KW, what's going on, um, it'll prompt an email to the right people. But we're trying to work out what, who should, who the right people should be, and what they should do about it, and, and how to, how to set that up so that it's uh, people can react. Because, um, as you, as you may be aware, there are there are um, demand charges and ratchets. So you know, the, the, the 15 minutes over the uh, the month or the year that where your demand goes highest sets the price for the rest of the time. So if you can bring that down. That's uh, something else we're going to get into. I'm going to show you a little tiny bit of how uh, this thing to work. I'm just going to show you for the, um, the non ETS people have to bear with me. I'm just going to show the nerds of us uh, what tuning looks like. This is the metric software. This is a school district, uh, it's a shuffle one. Um, it's by the senior high school. So these are the meters. This one is, you see what I'm seeing here? So this is a, there are two electric meters and two gas meters, that's what those E's and G's, I put those in there deliberately to help me work out which, which one is which. So this is an electric meter. First of all, we, we set up the meter with the number, and in the register we put the data in, so that's over here is the, uh, the KWH. I've not got KWH here at the moment, for, um, our software is not coping with that yet, so that's in the car, on the cards. And then this tab here is the actual tuning. We've got different um, displays. That's KWH against time. And then eating degree days. Eating degree days, there's the outdoor temperature. I should show you a gas one that might make a difference. So here's a gas one. So along the bottom, that's the temperature. Up the side is the firms you're using. So you can see that these temperatures just bumbles along and then starts rising. The balance point would be about here. And then if I unclick that, you can see all these numbers are different statistical values. This is the R squared.
squared number, which we're really trying to get as close to one as possible, the software gives me those little green checks which tell me that this is all going to work. This is the balance point, 52 degrees here. And if I um, skip through, can you see if I'm changing the temperature, the R squared over here is changing. So I play around with these values, working out where to leave it, where to get it best. That is to try to get your equation. Yes, to get this equation that explains, um, it, that, that predicts, if you like, you know, if, if the weather does this, your building or this, that gas meter in your building will do this. If the weather does that, or and or kids are at school, your electric meter will do this. So then that equation can go into the store procedure in the database That's that right. then calculates yes. the yes. savings. So, then, so the baseline period, the period of energy that you used for the data to put in there to do the tune has to be before the chemistry started changing the building, uh -huh. finding the baseline. You know, before we changed your um, furnace, before we started fiddling with your schedules, this is what your building was doing. And then when the new when the new weather comes along and you create the, the, the new baseline, if you like, as compared to the actual, you say this is what would have happened if we hadn't been tried right. to improve anything. So even if your bill is higher that next year than it was the year before, yes. you can say, well, but if based on the weather, you actually would be have been you know, saving money that you would yes. have. Spent. That's right. Yes, you can, because the new baseline is up here. Right. Because the you know cost of the energy went up or whatever. Right. Your actual is still down here somewhere. Hopefully, I mean sometimes it's not. <laughs> and then uh, then you want to work out well did, why. Yes, why did what we said we would do, we did, was it, did it work, or are people, are, have people not put into practice the recommendations we gave them right. in terms of using But you can see how important it is a client spends all this money on a retrofit and then the next year they're spending more money on energy and they're like, well, what did you do for us? No, There's a, 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 our sister department is measurement and verification, or M&B, which is a really important part of, of ESCO work. Um, and those guys are working out all the time um, did we meet a lot of our work is guaranteed. So that if you don't if the customer doesn't save energy, you might have a check. Um, that sometimes happens in school districts as well. It's the way that schools can't afford to just you know do things and see if they save money. They've got to it's public money, it's got to be got to be right. So this helps work out that it takes the the uh, guesswork. So if you get it wrong, the company has to spend more money. That's so at the moment, all the tuning I do is, is, is checked and double-checked by my first colleague, Anna. I don't know whether they'll let me loose and let me just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to 
any hurry. <laughs> the, more, I mean, the tricky thing about tuning is that it's an art as well as a science because there, there aren't any hard and fast right answers. Um, and I really struggle with that. You know, when, an equation, when an equation is an equation, but no, there are, there's a lot of interpretation, so you just have to keep doing more and more and more of it until you get a good feel for it. Um, I wrote an email this morning to, um, about one of these meters. You just cannot tune it. It just does not have a relationship with the weather or the schools and, and so on. So I've written an email to the people down there saying, can you find out more about this meter of this building? What's it for? What is it? You know, is it what's it doing? And uh, we'll see what they come back with. 